You can now support Ghost Maps on Patreon and buy our official merchandise on Redbubble. Simply look for We Are Huntu or click the links in the description. Ghost Maps, entry 41, Beach Road, Singapore. Susan, my third interviewee on this Hungry Ghost Month evening, seems rather eager to tell me her story. You must understand her, she says, excitedly waving over the drink stall auntie at this Ubi coffee shop. My life, very simple one. I honestly can't tell exactly how old Susan is. Even my best guess would place her anywhere between 30 and 50. And it doesn't help that her thick glasses make her eyes cartoonishly large. And I'm not sure whether her clothes have been designed to seem retro 90s or if she's actually been wearing them since the 90s. She's an interesting character, that's for sure. And honestly, her enthusiasm is just what I need, especially after my last interviewee's story. Susan orders her drink, then unprompted tells me a little about herself. Her life has always revolved around work ever since she finished school. I ask her if that gets boring, but she just shrugs casually. She tells me that she has her Korean dramas, and sometimes she'll even treat herself and her cousins to a hot pot dinner. Light it, can ready, she says, leaning one arm over the back of the red plastic chair. As an accountant, Susan's worked in all sorts of companies, but one organization's about the same as another to her. You start up, you big company, I also only see numbers, she says, as our drinks arrive. She pauses for a second before correcting herself. Numbers, she hisses in exaggeratedly hushed tones, aren't actually the only things that she's seen in her work. I take this as her not-so-subtle cue and switch my recorder on, then ask her to start from the beginning. Back in 2014, Susan was working for a travel company whose office was located on the seventh floor of Golden Mile Complex along Beach Road. Her boss, a very traditional middle-aged man named Mr. Tan, insisted that a Taoist altar with its own little spotlight be placed prominently in the office near the reception area. It was this altar that greeted Susan every morning after she grabbed her morning coffee from the army market across the street. When she first joined, she of course made it a point to arrive on time. But pretty soon, she started to come in earlier and earlier. After all, she tells me, it's not like she had anything else better to do. Three months into her job, the admin team made for Susan her own set of keys, happy to have someone that actually wanted to come in at 7.30 in the morning to get the place ready for everyone else. One of the admin staff, however, a 40-something named Karen, told Susan not to freak out if it seemed like there was someone else in the office with her. Susan asked her what she meant, but Karen just dodged the question with annoyingly vague responses. Wait and see, la, she'd say. For a while, Susan had all but completely forgotten about Karen's seemingly cryptic warning. But then, one day, 
while heading back to her table after flipping all the lights and air conditioning on she caught sight of a figure or at least she thought it was a figure something had dashed past the officer's ensuite washroom and around a corner susan hesitantly called out hoping that it was one of her colleagues or even the cleaner no response cautiously she investigated but couldn't find anyone else about half an hour later karen arrived and in a panic susan told her what had happened karen however calmly explained that what susan had seen was the benevolent office spirit it protects us and brings prosperity karen had said despite karen's soothing tone susan was still shaken up from her experience for the rest of that day at least over the following few months though she would encounter the spirit a couple more times and after a while began to grow accustomed to it it was almost like it had become a new part of her morning routine i tell susan that this sounds like a pretty pleasant encounter with a raised eyebrow however she responds who say i finish it was close to the middle of the hungry ghost month that year susan as always had arrived earlier than everyone else as she got out the elevator and turned the corner to the office however she saw something that stopped her dead in her tracks she nearly screamed but quickly caught herself outside their office were several boxes of hell notes mr tan had ordered them for the company to burn on the month's 15th day lacking any storage space the admin team had placed them outside the night before but it wasn't the boxes that had stopped susan it was the human like head floating near them its skin was pale and blood dripped from its neck its lips drooped slightly but its eyes its eyes were fixed firmly on the boxes finally regaining her wits susan ducked back around the corner she quickly fished out her phone and messaged karen what was happening 15 minutes later karen darted out of the elevator her eyes wide as susan gestured wordlessly to her slowly the pair peered around the corner much to susan's relief the head was gone but on the ground near the boxes of hell notes was a small pool of blood For the next couple of days susan refused to be alone in the office she could wait for karen at the taxi stand on the ground floor every morning now with two cups of coffee from the army market the pair would then head up together and always always peek around the corner from the elevator lobby to ensure that the coast was clear they never did see the head again as the hungry ghost month drew to a close however 
Susan realized that she hadn't seen the benevolent office spirit in a while. Making her way back to her desk one morning, however, she caught sight of something dashing across the washroom again. But it wasn't the office spirit. Susan knew that much. It was more like a shadow. And it was smaller. Less like a figure. And more like just a head. Susan quit a month or two later. She found herself feeling increasingly uneasy in the office. Even after the Hungry Ghost Month had passed. But her breaking point was when the altar's little spotlight blew out. And no matter how many times Mr. Tan changed the bulb or even the light itself, that one corner of the reception area remained ominously shrouded in shadow. Susan is looking at me expectantly through her thick glasses. How? She says, trying to play it cool, but clearly eager to hear my response. Ken? Ken, I tell her with a smile. She nods triumphantly, finishes a drink, then says she's got to head off. New episode of her favorite Korean dramas online. I thank her for a story and stand up to say goodbye just as I see my last three interviewees of the night walking over. If you want to discover more of Southeast Asia's other side, subscribe now and follow us on social media at We Are Hantu. You can also buy official merchandise on Redbubble and be one of our supporters on Patreon. Ghost Maps is recorded on Audio-Technica mics.